Hi folks, this is Karim Rao from Rao Visualizer channel. We will continue our lab, Terminator Labs, the video number 47. We have been discussing in the previous video the following. We have been working now uh, for 25 videos on how to deploy Windows 10 using the latest Microsoft Deployment Toolkit uh, with addition or with the help of the WDS, which is Windows Deployment Services. We have discussed a lot of concepts. We have discussed how we can capture an image, how we can deploy an image, and there is a special operation uh, for the deployment, an operation called Zero Touch Installation, which is a fully automated process uh, for deployment without any interaction from the user. The normal capture process or the normal deployment process is called Light Touch Installation, which is a semi-automated process. Some of the uh, steps are automated and some of the steps need the interaction of the user. So, uh, and there is another or a third process which is user driven an installation or deployment or capture this needs uh, the uh, always the interaction of the user okay so we have the previous video configured the zero touch installation process uh, we have seen the task we have seen the steps so we need to see the real thing we need to see the zero touch installation in action but before that i need to make a small note I have already done this or the task that we have done uh, for the zero touch installation is concerning or concerned about uh, deploying the windows server 2022 uh, standard edition image with the programs captured with it i have already done this step with myself i have already done the process and it was successful but i didn't record it so <clears throat> to do that or to repeat the process or uh, to let you guys see how this is done, I have already done uh, another task, zero touch installation task for the Windows 10 LTSC Enterprise uh, 2021 edition. So I have done this with the Windows 10 Enterprise and I have the same process or the zero touch installation will be done, but only one thing will be uh, done by the user in this process is the task selection. Okay. In the previous video, we have seen how we can automate even the selection of the task, but with uh, the Windows 10 LTSC or the deployment, I have not put, the, put this step. I have left to me the decision to choose the task. So it's a fully automated process except the selection of the task. But as I've said before, uh, you can do this from the MDT database and I have said before I have already done this with Windows Server 2022 and I have seen it and it was working but I didn't uh, have the chance to record it so we will see how this is done with Windows 10 LTSC we will see how the process will be seamlessly done without any issues so let's go and see how the process will be done okay so we will open uh, the video first of all this is the first video of the deployment we will see here something strange here it should uh, the, the virtual machine should boot in the pixie boot mode okay and then take an ip address from the dhcp server and then communicate with wds okay all of this was done in the capture process and in the normal capture process and the normal deployment process here we can see it is uh, we have a different uh, screen it's concerning the UEFI so all of the capture process and the deployment process done before was uh, was on a virtual machine its firmware is BIOS okay so this is an old legacy firmware that was not used anymore so our capture and deployment process was running smoothly because we were having the virtual machines firmware as BIOS okay when we or when I try to deploy on a virtual machine that have a firmware UFI, you will see an error. It will not be able to go to the Pixie mode or Pixie boot mode. So how we can solve this issue? We have two ways to do that. A manual way and an automatic way. So let's see first how we can solve this issue. Okay, we will have this uh, uh, window. We will type exit. Okay, and then we will have here the option to go to the boot manager. Okay, this is another thing. And then we tell him to UFI Pixie version 4. So this is how we can boot 
the big C boot through the UFI framework. This is the manual way and needs an interaction from the user. So to make it a fully automated process, we will need to change something in the DHCP and I will show you all what need to be changed. Okay, so this is the UFI. Then we will see start Pixie boot over IP version 4 and then it should take an IP address from the DHCP and then it needs, here we can see it's going in the WDS boot manager. It communicate with the DHCP token IP address, the server or communicate with WDS server, the server name, then we need to press enter to boot from network service. So now it's communicating with the WDS and then the process will continue. Okay, now we have a couple of things. We will have three boot images. We, we remember saying that a capture boot image will redirect you to the capture share folders in the MDT. The deployment boot image will redirect you to the deployment share folders in the MDT. This is a third one we will discuss later. When you choose this boot image, it will redirect you to the PSD or the PowerShell deployment share folder. We will discuss this later because it's a very, very important module uh, that is added or a very uh, another uh, important uh, add-on that is added to the MDT and it will enhance the performance of the MDT and add other features to it. Okay, so we will choose the deploy boot image and then it will begin loading the deployment boot image and then we will begin the zero touch installation task. Okay, so uh, this is the manual way, okay, how you can uh, make the, the virtual machine boot to the Pixie boot mode through the framework UFI. How we can solve this issue? One of my friends uh, have this uh, option or have told me how to do that. This is option 67 called boot file name, okay? It's currently, or the default one, is boot slash 64, uh, x64 slash wdnbp.com, okay? You need to change that, okay, from this to, let me show you all, to this one, okay? Boot slash x64 bit slash wdsmgfw.efi. So this is how you can solve the issue. Another thing, where is this uh, file located? If we go there, here is, this is the file. It is the WDS, okay, mgfw.efi. And uh, another one, you can see uh, uh, the file that is named wdnbp.exe. This is the file that was originally, uh, or the default. Or you can see boot mgfw.efi. So you can see this one or this one. Okay, so to solve that, you need to change it to this one. Okay, another thing, if this one was not working, then you can make it this one. Okay, so it is basically uh, pointing or or redirecting the WDS to uh, load a certain boot file. Okay, we will see what is option uh, or what is this P option 67. Anyway, so to make it short, you need to change that to this one. Okay, this is correct. If it will not work, you can change it to this one. But this is basically how my friend solved his problem. He changed it from this file to this file. If this file doesn't work, I urge you to put this file. We will see and uh, ask the AI tools what is option 67 or what does it do exactly. Okay, so let's go and ask uh, Google Bard what is option 67. Okay, if we go there and try to ask Google Bard what is option 67 in DHCP. This is one thing we need to uh, ask Google Bard about it. DHCP option 67 is a network boot option that specifies the path to a network boot program, NBP, that the client should download and execute to boot the operating system. It is typically used in conjunction with DHCP option 66, which specifies the TFTP server that the client should use to download the NBP. DHCP option 67 is often used in environments where the client machines do not have a hard drive or other local storage, such as thin clients or cloud-based workstations. In these cases, 
The NBP is responsible for loading the operating system into memory and booting the client machine. Here is an example of how DHCP option 67 is used. 1. The client machine boots up and sends a DHCP request to the DHCP server. 2. The DHCP server responds to the DHCP request and provides the client machine with an IP address, subnet mask, default gateway, and other network configuration information. 3. The DHCP server also sends DHCP option 66, which specifies the TFTP server that the client machine should use to download the NBP. 4. The DHCP server also sends DHCP option 67 which specifies the path to the NBP. 5. The client machine downloads the NBP from the TFTP server and executes it. 6. The NBP loads the operating system into memory and boots the client machine. DHCP option 67 is a versatile and powerful option that can be used to boot a wide variety of operating systems. It is a valuable tool for IT administrators who need to deploy and manage thin clients or cloud-based workstations. So we can see this is very, very simple. Option 67 will redirect the client to uh, choose the NP or NBP or network boot program, which will allow it to download the boot image. Okay, so this is basically what option 67 do. If we go to uh, Claude and ask it the same question, he is saying that HSP option 67 is a boot file name option. Here are some key details about it and what it does. It specifies the boot file path for Pixie boot environment, so it indicates the network boot program to download. The HSP clients and the option 67 is request the boot file name from the HSP. Okay, the HSP server can be configured to return the appropriate boot file pass using option 67. For example, in a Pixie boot environment, the HSP option 67 would contain a pass like this one, we have seen it, to point to the network boot loader program. This indicates to the Pixie client to download to download Pixie Line download and execute the file to continue the network boot process. In summary, the HSP Office 67 gives the boot file path that Pixie clients should load from the boot server during the network boot process. It allows HSP dynamically configure which boot file the clients should retrieve for further chain loading the OS deployment environment. This avoids needing to hardcore boot file passes on each client. So I tell him to explain it in a simple term when a computer boots from the network using pixie boot it does not know what file it should download and run to continue the boot process the pixie client sends sorry guys the pixie client send the hsp request asking what boot file should i load from the server the dhsp server can be configured to respond with option 67 which contains the pass and the file name that the client needs. For example, the DHCP server responds with this uh, location. This tells the Pixie client, go to download so and so from the boot server and execute it to continue booting. So in simple terms, uh, option 67 gives the next boot file for Pixie client to load so the boot process can continue stage by stage from the network environment. It enables directly configuring which boot file the client should load uh, next, instead of hardcoring file paths in each Pixie image. So, this is a good explanation. What is the relationship between WDS and HSP option 67? Explain in simple terms. Okay, work together to enable Pixie boot deployments. Here is an example explanation how they are related. Clients boot in Pixie uh, environment. Client sends HSP request asking what file should I boot from. The HSP returns option so and so specifying pass to uh, WDS NPB. Okay, this we have seen this. The WDS bootloader. Okay, client uses FTP or TFTP. This is a protocol to download this program. Okay, from the WDS server. Then this program runs and asks WDS server, what should I do next? WDS instructs client to go to a boot image, which is boot.wem, or the one that we have already added from the MDT. Okay, then the client downloads boot the twem containing the Windows PXE environment. Client boots in the XPE environment to begin deployment process. Very, very good explanation. Option 67 tells the Pixie client the first WDS boot loader to run. Then this 
bootloader continues the compression to deliver the full boot image. Okay, so the HSP option 67 initializes the WDS environment. WDS takes over and delivers the deployment environment to the client device. Together, they are they enable booting devices over the network to start automated deployments. Very very good explanation, and actually it clears a lot. Okay, or it thus clarifies a lot. So this is a good uh, answer from Claude. Uh, let me see if I ask Copilot the same question. If you go to copy and ask it the same question, if you go there and ask it like that. Okay, let's see that. I think I asked it already. Uh, here we ask it uh, Google Bar the same question. Okay. Let me see also the, the answer of uh, Google board concerning this uh, this section. Okay, so let's go and see Cloud. Oh, sorry, uh, uh, Windows Copilot is used to specify the boot file name. The option is typically used in network booting environment like Pixie Boot to specify the location of the boot file. In the context of a server running with DHCP and Windows deployment. You would need to enable option 67 to help connecting clients and find the appropriate Pixie server. The value for option 67 would be the path to the boot file. For example, you might write, this is the default option. Please note that both option 66 boot server host name and 67 are present in the HSP offer. They take precedent over option 43. Option 66 contains the server URL or IP address. Okay, not a good answer. But let's see here also what is the answer of, uh, of Google Bard concerning the uh, relation between WDS and uh, DHCP option 67. Windows Deployment Services, WDS, and DHCP option 67 are both involved in the network boot process for deploying Windows operating systems. However, they serve distinct purposes and interact with each other to facilitate the deployment process. WDS is a server role that provides the infrastructure for deploying Windows operating systems over a network. It employs the Preboot Execution Environment, PXE, to enable client machines to boot from the network, eliminating the need for local storage. WDS also stores and distributes Windows operating system images, which are essentially snapshots of a fully configured system, ready to be deployed to client machines. DHCP option 67 is a network boot option specified in the DHCP protocol. It informs the client machine about the location of a network boot program, NBP, that should be downloaded and executed to initiate the operating system boot process. This NBP typically resides on a TFTP server, which is a server that uses the Trivial File Transfer Protocol, TFTP, to transfer files over a network. When a client machine boots up and sends a DHCP request, the DHCP server responds with network configuration information, including the IP address, subnet mask, default gateway, and DHCP options. DHCP option 66 provides the address of the TFTP server from which the client machine should download the NBP, while DHCP option 67 specifies the path to the NBP itself. The client machine, upon receiving the DHCP response, retrieves the NBP from the designated TFTP server and executes it. The NBP then interacts with WDS to retrieve the appropriate operating system image and boot the client machine into the installation process. In essence, DHCP option 67 plays a crucial role in directing the client machine to the NBP which in turn collaborates with WDS to deliver and install the operating system image. This collaboration between WDS and DHCP option 67 enables seamless network booting and deployment of Windows operating systems. So, not like the answer of Claude, I think this is the most, or the Claude AI answer is the most uh, simple and uh, easy to understand uh, answer. Let's ask... Windows Copilot, <clears throat> the same question. <clears throat> uh, 
Okay, the same answer like uh, Claude, uh, sorry, the same answer like uh, Google Bard. Two are not that easy to understand. The best one is for Claude. Very, very simple to explain, very, very simple to understand. So, we have known now how we can solve the UFI fixy boot, uh, fixy boot option or how we can fix this problem. Let's continue with our uh, installation. So, now our client has already booted in the pixie boot mode and retrieved the deployment uh, boot image now we need to see the process okay so now we need to have an automated deployment process we will not do any interaction or any input except for the task choosing or choosing the task okay and then everything will be done automatically okay the computer name will be uh, given automatically the computer will be joining the domain automatically. The applications will be installed automatically. Everything will be done automatically except for the task. And as I've said before, this can be also automated in the MDT database. We have done this in the previous video. Okay. So this is uh, what we have seen. This is the custom background that you can uh, do or that you can apply uh, through the MDT environment. Okay. So let's see that. Here we can see. It begins processing the bootstrap setting automatically and then it will begin uh, processing the custom setting the tie and I setting uh, automatically and the MDT database setting all of this will be processed automatically we will only given uh, the option to choose the task okay And I have done this uh, deliberately or on purpose because I have a lot of tasks. So if you need to uh, make zero touch uh, automation uh, for a certain task, you can do that from choosing the task or even you can automate the process from the MD database. So you can uh, specify a certain machine to uh, do a certain task. We have done this in the Windows Server 2022. You can specify a task for every machine and save it to the MDD database to automate the whole process okay so we can see it is processing the rules of the MDT database this will take a little bit of time And by the way, also, uh, the format of the hard disk and the partitioning will also be done automatically. Remember, we need or we have uh, configured to partition our hard disk to two partitions, the C partition and the D partition. So this is also uh, done or it will be done uh, through that task. Okay, here it's still processing. Okay, processing. Still processing all of these are all MDT database uh, rules. Okay, it is processed now. After the after that, we will be given the task to choose from task sequence ID. Okay, it had reached the task sequence ID. Then the default section in the custom setting with INI, you can see that the task sequence ID, it is the last one to be processed or the, the one before the last one, okay? So it will take some time. Task sequence ID, then the default section, then we will be given the option to choose the task. This is the only thing we will do in this process so I will choose the Windows 10 Enterprise LTSC okay and we will tell him next and then you will not do anything else everything is automated installation of programs uh, PC uh, name joining the domain uh, everything everything will be done So we will have a couple of seconds until the task is executed. Remember, I have a limited hardware, so uh, the process seems to be uh, slow. OK, 
okay but this is if you have uh, uh, a compatible hardware or or you have uh, an, uh, a high end hardware this process will be done in a, in, uh, in in terms of minutes okay or in in a couple of seconds sorry in a couple of minutes okay so now it will take some time tell him next next so if you go further it will take some time okay and at the end the process will begin okay we will see that in the upcoming uh, uh, video just a moment so it will take some time now let's go to the fourth video Here you can see the process will begin the gather and then we will see the UFI it will begin uh, processing or it it knows that this virtual machine is UFI so it checks the framework of the machine and then it begins uh, executing in the task sequence the part that is concerned with the UFI framework machines we will see that in a moment okay here set high performance power plan and then validate validate the hardware setting then format UFI this is the one that will be executed before that the BIOS section the one that was executed we can see partition 0 and 1 and 2 and 3 partition I think 1 and 2 or 0 and 1 is concerning the EFI partition and the secure boot partition okay anyway so we will see that we will go and check the machine we'll see how much partitions are created okay so now it is partitioning and then formatting okay and then the image should be uh, deployed we can see here we didn't select anything okay everything is done automatically no software is selected no uh, computer name is uh, entered no uh, joining the domain the credentials are up, uh, is provided everything is done uh, through the MDT database and the custom setting the timeline okay so install the operating system so this will take a couple of seconds it will take some time okay now let's go to the fifth video and here the deployment is finished let's go and check first the machine seems to be normal but if you just try to log in you will see this is the banner welcome banner of our skynet network so the machine has joined the domain now we will try to log in with an active directory user account and see the different setting we will see the name of the machine we'll see here we can see that you are signing to skynet so it had joined the domain automatically this is my domain admin account we will see the different things that we have done through the task we will see different programs we will see the name of the machine we will see the partitioning of the hard disk okay we will see a lot of things done by the task sequence okay so as i have uh, promised you before guys this is uh, a process done in 45 minutes or less and it will deliver you the machine on the login screen okay this is basically what you will do you will not do anything except asking the user to log into the machine okay you will not do anything as an IT this is completely done and behind the scene from the IT through the task sequence okay so now we are logging with the user care of okay it will take some time because it's creating the profile for the first time okay so now this is uh, for the last video to use this is the one now we can see something here first the active directory login script is applied successfully which displays this pc on the desktop and then replace this pc with the name of the pc which is test for this is i have already inserted in the database of the mdt so the name was taken successfully from the mt database and applied automatically we can see vlc player or this is installed automatically the applications that we have chosen 
in the MDT database and we will check now and see the rest of the programs and we will see also uh, the partitioning of the hard disk so let's wait and see this is uh, the Active Directory login script and uh, it will also apply uh, two keyboards the one for the English keyboard and uh, the Arabic keyboard okay so now we will check and see the different things here we can see this is the desktop background for our domain now we will see the first thing we will see that the open shell program is installed this is the first thing and then if we check this is the uh, open shell program so it, it is installed automatically and then we can see here that uh, we are when you open this PC the Explorer goes directly to this PC section and you will not see here the desktop downloads uh, pictures and so on so this is not displayed here this is done through script to hide everything uh, to sorry to make this pc uh, when we open it go to the this pc section we can see this is the uh, network map drives for the domain admin uh, we will see that we have two partitions uh, uh, equic uh, uh, they are equal in size because we have made the task to have 50% of the hard disk for partition C and 50% or the other 50% for the D partition so we can see the partitions are uh, done successfully uh, the, the, the scripts uh, deployed or the scripts inserted in the task sequence uh, is also done successfully or it is applied successfully so you can see everything here is applied uh, in a slim, seamless way we need to see the rest what are the rest of the programs we have for example uh, programs like uh, Office should be installed. We have uh, we have something like this uh, done in the task. Okay, so if you open here the all programs section, okay, we will see that we have all of these are installed automatically. The Adobe, Adobe Acrobat Reader, the Notepad Plus Plus, the PowerPoint. Okay, okay, the Office as a whole, the Open Shell, the Seven Zip, the Video LAN or the VLC. All of these are installed automatically without any uh, interaction from you as a user. So we can see the partitions are done, the programs are installed, the machine has joined the domain, the name of the machine is taken automatically. So the last thing we need to go and check the disk management to see if uh, the EFI partition is created to make sure that uh, the task sequence or the MDT has verified that this machine has a framework of UFI so if you right click and try to see the disk management section or right click and manage from here we will see how the partition or how the hard disk is partitioned so this is as we said before here as, as we can see it's very very simple process okay very very simple process okay we will not see the disk so here we can see this is a very very basic and direct way for making the zero touch installation uh, the trick here is to prepare yourself or prepare the configuration and wait for it so you need to prepare the configuration and to verify it is correct so the process of the zero touch installation we done seamlessly I again assure you that it can be done or it is a fully automated process in this video I have only chosen the task but I have done this on Windows Server 2022 deployment task sequence I didn't choose anything it was done automatically from the beginning to the end okay so you can try it yourself guys and this is the end of our video in the upcoming video we will discuss a very or two important add-ons to the MDT the first thing is called power shell deployment module and OSD cloud module these are very two important uh, add-ons that will enhance the MDT performance and make it uh, cover other areas for deployment so we all know that the MDT covers or it, it is used in the local area uh, deployment or through the local network area deployment these two modules will help you to uh, make the MDT deploy or deploy using the MDT on the cloud section okay this will be our uh, upcoming uh, uh, upcoming subject to discuss hope this video informative for you all and thank you all for being thank you so much